Curtis, a licensed clinical mental health counselor and professor of counseling. Wanted to give an example, actually two examples for classical conditioning, which is one of the schools of thought within behavior therapy, along with applied behavioral analysis and social modeling theory. But classical condition, let's go right to the example of Pavlov's dog. And we're talking about paired association, which we've all experienced. Uh, but within this situation, the language would get me a little confused when I was younger, when I first started teaching this. So hopefully this will be helpful. Let me know in the comments. We've got in this situation with Pavlov's dog an unconditioned stimulus food. And what that means is as long as you're hungry and you present food to somebody, it's going to produce a physiological reaction such as salivation. Uh, we don't have to do anything to the food. We don't have to uh, you know, condition it in any way. It will produce that if we're hungry. Now, um, what they then did was pair this with a neutral stimulus, a bell ringing. Okay, the bell ringing on its own is not going to produce salivation. But when we ring a bell while presenting the food, then we condition the bell. We condition it as a stimulus. So at that point, then all we have to do is ring the bell and we get a conditioned response, which is salivation. Now, if we ring the bell enough without presenting food, then we get extinction. It will no longer produce salivation. The dog is like, hey, wait a minute. You keep ringing this bell, but there's no food. So it's not going to, so I'm not going to get excited about this. All right, let's look at an example, and I would love to see more of this type of research happening. And I heard this from Bill Moyers, Healing in the Mind series, um, uh, based on psychoneuroimmunology founded by Adder or Adair and Cohen. And this, in this example, uh, there was a young woman who had a severe disorder to where her immune system was essentially hyperactive in her body, and they had to use a lot of medicines to help tame it. I'm, I'm using very, very layperson words here. And um, the medicine itself was causing a lot of complications, so they were trying to figure out is, oh, how can we reduce the amount of medicine she's on? So they took an unconditioned stimulus, which is an immunosuppressant medicine, okay? You give somebody an immunosuppressant, it's going to reduce their immune system functioning. You don't have to condition it in any other way. They then took a neutral stimulus, and there were two. Um, uh, one was that, that there was an essential oil that she would smell right when taking the immunosuppressant. And she would also take a spoonful of castor oil, which I hear tastes really bad. So she had two neutral stimulus that she would take while taking this medicine, a pill, maybe it's a shot, I'm not certain, that were then conditioned to, uh, to condition a response to where all she had to do was smell the essential oil and take the castor oil, and it reduced her immune system functioning without taking the medicine. Okay, and so uh, that did, in this particular case, it did help reduce the amount of medication she was on. Um, and so wouldn't this be cool to see us be able to do more often with folks that maybe need a pain medicine or an a, um, anxiolytic, which we know can be addictive, but maybe we could you know, pair it with something else. And then after a while, it does produce the condition response without the addictive medicine. Uh, and yes, that would take a lot of time and so forth. I understand it. Anyway, let me know if this is helpful, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.